hey guys, mind maps are a great way to revise. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about how we can make them more effective. So some of the worst things I see um, when we have mind maps is really big titles. Like titles that take up about half the page and are beautifully coloured in um, and are not going to get you any marks in the exam at all. None at all. So please, I know, I know you like things to look nice, okay? I know. But please stop with the bubble writing. Stop with the colouring in large blocks of text. Stop with the large, large, large titles that take up a majority of a page because that's not going to get you any marks in the exam. And we want to have effective mind maps that will get you loads and loads of marks in the exam. So I know the bit of paper may be bigger. Maybe you've got a nice A3 bit of paper there, but it doesn't really have to write any bigger. Okay, just write in your normal size writing. You can have a title in the middle. And you can have subtitles coming off, but please, just normal size writing. Now I'm not saying this has to be boring normal size writing. Go crazy, go write in loads and loads of different colours. I'm a big fan of my pink and my turquoise pens. Writing loads of different colours. Um, but it doesn't just have to be short bits of writing. We can do long bits of writing and you can make it interactive, you can make it more interesting. Go and get yourself a stack of tiny little post-it notes. Question on here lift up flap and then have the answer hidden underneath. So we can use them to help with your recall of short information. Um, you can also have kind of like, you can take your mind map, fill it in, leave loads and loads of blanks. So um, this war happened in blank for the dates. Go to like your local library, your local stationery shop, Get your parents to take it into work and photocopy your mind map, okay, with loads and loads of blanks in. Then, maybe get them to photocopy it like a few times for you. Maybe A4, maybe shrink it down to, maybe like shrink it down to A4. Um, do like a master copy with your revision guide with where you're filling in the blanks, okay. So you've got maybe two copies stuck on your wall, maybe one on top of the other. One with blanks in to test you and then one with the answers on behind it so you can check the answers. And then maybe you've got your big A3 version stuck to your wall. Maybe you've got a smaller A4 version um, where you use that as a revision to like a fill in the blanks exercise to see what you can remember. And then you can go back and mark your work. Now when we're talking about how much information to put on mind maps, think about one topic per mind map, okay? Now I know some of the topics are bigger than other topics and I know this isn't going to work for all subjects so it's not going to be great for maths because maths you kind of just need to practice over and over and over and over and over again. Um, but things like history, things like geography where you've got large blocks of information to remember, this is going to be a really really good technique for you. Um, you can also do it with pictures, here is a picture and then have the labels missing from the picture. And then like underneath your post-it notes or on your second field in my map, all of the information um, that you need to remember on there. Now when we're talking about how to get information, um, say from your revision guide or from videos onto my maps, do not write out massive long sentences, okay? Now I know in some exams you have to write in sentences, but you don't have to in my maps. In my maps we need bullet points, we need short, sharp bits of information so that you're not reading a load of waffle which isn't going to get you any marks before we get down to the points that are actually going to get you marks the points that you actually need to remember for your exams um so i love mind maps um but if you're literally just copying stuff out of your vision guide and spending ages and ages coloring it in to make it look beautiful they are not an effective way of revising however if you use some of the techniques that i've mentioned here they are an effective way of revising. 